the normal objection is to the idea of uh, the raping of slave women, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, fundamentally, the issue was that when the Israelites took a enemy nation, uh, that they were allowed to take certain of the women who had not known men. And this, of course, had to do with the military situation that existed in the day. And what is often missed by these folks, and I don't even, I don't even have a clue what the 32 virgin women of Jesus thing is, since you can't even get the text right, then it's, it's obviously just a flight of fancy imagination. No, the reference is correct. All you would need, have needed to do is read down to the uh, verses 40. Let me read it out for you. Um, they gave 675 sheep to the Lord. The soldiers got donkeys. They gave 61 donkeys to the Lord. The soldiers got 16,000 women. Then they gave 32 women to the Lord. This is verse 40, which I referenced. Then they gave women to the Lord, just like they gave donkeys to the Lord and cattle to the Lord. So it was there, you just didn't read far enough down. But uh, the normal objection is to the idea of uh, the raping of slave women, etc., etc. What's normally missed, and again, uh, if you go to Sermon Audio, look up the Holiness Code uh, in the sermon series that I did at, at PRBC, and look these texts up, I expand upon these things more fully. But what you need to understand is if there was not provision made for these women, uh, once the husbands had uh, either died in battle or been executed, um, they would be left with no visible means of support in a, in a destroyed area. And basically it was, it was a condemnation to death. This was actually a mechanism uh, whereby life could be saved. We don't view it that way uh, today because we live in very different situations than they did back then, but fundamentally this was a mechanism that would allow for the saving of life uh, and the continuation of uh, individuals and, and, and the society uh, with still very often a, a real concern uh, concerning the bringing in of idolatry and and the temptation to foreign idols that was all that, that frequently gets mixed in as well in the situation but uh, this there were a number of texts that we dealt with that from a modern perspective looked so very strange uh, but from the ancient perspective made perfect sense in the sense that they were actually saving people alive and i don't have time to go into this at all but uh if you read the end of the book of Judges, if you haven't read it lately, it's not a favorite text. Few people extract their life verse from the last few chapters of Judges. It's this horrific story about a Levite who has a concubine. That's not a big problem back in the ancient world. He has a concubine. She gets raped. So in outrage, he cuts up her body into pieces, sends it out. The people are outraged. They go and they kill a whole bunch of uh, Benjamites. And, and uh, who, uh, anyhow, it's a long story. There's a, a, a lot of trouble. And now the perpetrators of the crime are left without enough women. And they made it's, I won't go, it's a crazy, wild story. You really should read it. Uh, it would be like a great HBO miniseries. And you get to the end and you realize in this ancient world, so they go kidnap a bunch of women to make wives for the perpetrators of the rape. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, women, you ought to read that to see. And, and it ought to make you really, really mad. And men, if it doesn't make you mad, listen to the women. They'll tell you why it ought to make you mad. And you know what? God seems an, an accessory to the crime. This is the kind of people that are called God's people. Fast forward a little bit to the story of Ezra and, and when they've taken foreign wives. And Ezra just says, uh, we can't have any foreign wives around here, divorce them all. And again, God is relatively silent in all this, but he seems to be an accessory to the crime. You have all these stories in the, ancient, in the biblical text where women are treated like dirt. And there's no good way to make it look better.
Deuteronomy 21, verses 10 to 14. When you go out to war against your enemies, and Yahweh your God gives them into your hand, and you take them captive, and you see among them captives a beautiful woman, and you desire to take her to be your wife, and you bring her home to your house, she shall shave her head and pare her nails. Signs of mourning. Mourning the loss of her loved one. Mourning the loss of her loved one. Mourning the loss of her loved ones. She shall take off the clothes in which she was captured. And she will remain in your house and lament her father and her mother a full month. After that, you may go into her and be her husband. After that, you may go into her. After that, you may go into her and be her husband.